when you think of a quintessential New York developer, you're probably thinking of Harry MacLeod. This is a guy who built an empire, lost it all, and then, through a combination of charm, chutzpah, and savvy deal-making, built it all back again. But just as 432 Park was smashing sales records, Harry's life took on a pretty interesting turn. So EB, Harry's had quite a year, right? 432 Park, I think it defied expectations. It's, it's smashing records. You just wrote yesterday about a, a $91 million sale that closed at the building. However, in his personal life, uh, things have changed quite a bit. So last year, um, Harry's longtime wife, Linda, filed for divorce. This was after Page Six um, disclosed um, that he was in a relationship with a much younger woman. Mm -hmm. Linda files for divorce. Is it a real estate? I can't answer that, but his divorce trial has certainly laid bare all of his holdings mm -hmm. and, and really kind of offered a window into how Maclow Properties is run. And so we have this, we have this sort of sordid tale of romance and betrayal, but the reason that it was interesting is that in the divorce proceedings in court, and you've been to court several times this year, uh, a lot of how development works in New York sort of came out, right? It's just been fascinating to see exactly how the finances work. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the Maclows are trying to split their fortune, mm -hmm. an empire that's, you know, an estimated $2 billion. Mm -hmm. You did about a dozen trips to court for what I think is at least my favorite story of the year. It's Maclow versus Maclow. So talk a little bit about how this came together. You were breaking news from the trial. And then you said, hey, there's something more here. And we tried something we haven't done before. Mm -hmm. Well, I think one thing to remember is this is a divorce. This is matrimonial. So mm -hmm. there's no court transcripts. And that's what initially prompted us to go to court. The only way we were going to have a glimpse at this mm -hmm. is to actually be in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. And so day after day, we'd go to court. I'd go to court and hear different testimony from accountants, business experts, art experts, Harry Macklow himself. And what was really interesting is just to see how all of these players are coming together to, to kind of value this vast, vast empire. Mm -hmm. And the idea, I think, is to show that you have less so that you can keep more right. or take more, right? Exactly. And that's, that's apparently that's basic divorce 101, uh -huh. that you basically want to make, you know, you want to reduce the value of your assets or mm -hmm. the assets you want mm -hmm. so that you get a larger slice of, of the joint pie. And that's I, what each are doing. And mm. so... What are some of the more creative ways that they did this? I, 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 I'm thinking of the 1031 exchange, but talk about that. Sure. I mean, well, I'm not thinking of the 1031 exactly, but one example, for, you know, just to throw one out. Mm -hmm. um, one example is, is their apartment at the plaza. Mm -hmm. It's, um, they bought it for six $60 million in 07. Um, it's 14,000 square feet. It's set up as an art gallery. Mm -hmm. And Linda Macklow says, her, her real estate expert says it's worth 55 million. Mm -hmm. Harry said it's worth 107 million. Mm -hmm. That is very, very different. Mm -hmm. And he's basically saying that so that, you know, when the judge splits up this, you know, their marital property, um, he's left with something. He doesn't want to give it all away. So the reason this is more interesting than other cases is not only is it Matt Cloud, but he's also an active developer. This is not property that we're disputing that is just there. This is property that is being built, that is in acquisition play in, in some cases, and is, is really shaping New York now. Right? Exactly. And that's one of the reasons we did this story. Mm -hmm. You know, covering his divorce, um, besides the drama and human interest, I mean, we're actually, we're getting a glimpse at, you know, the business of an active developer in New mm -hmm. York. And some of his projects that he's working on now have come up. Mm -hmm. We're talking One Wall Street, 432 Park, um, you know, his, his projects on the Upper East Side. Mm -hmm. And what's been interesting is that as his lawyers try to minimize the value of his assets mm -hmm. to kind of preserve his fortune, they've thrown these projects under the bus. Mm -hmm. You know, his lawyers have said, one Wall Street, yeah, it's in this landmark building. Yeah, next There's, to a freaking parking garage. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's down there. There's security. You can't drive around it. It's not doing that well. They've said 200 East 59th Street, which is a gorgeous new building that's mm -hmm. almost being been, it's almost done with mm -hmm. construction. It's only sold three units in mm -hmm. the past few years. So 432 really Park sluggish. Retail is in the door. Horrible, <laughs> horrible. Uh -huh. Look, I mean, there's no denying that the development market is more challenging than a few years ago, but, you know, they really have, have, have decimated his projects mm -hmm. all in an effort to preserve his assets. And these are projects that he has a lot of foreign partners as well, right? So with um, 
with one Wall Street and 432 Park, he actually has a member of the Qatari royal family in the project. I wonder how they feel about what's going on in court. You know, what's interesting is that um, we talked to a few different people for our cover story mm -hmm. just to kind of take the pulse of what investors and bankers, lawyers were saying. And I hope you talked to more than a few. No, yeah. we, talked to, we talked to a <laughs> lot. But, uh -huh. you know, we wanted to know, like, are people watching this? Do, are his investors concerned? Mm -hmm. And what everyone sort of almost unanimously said is, this is kind of water cooler chit chat. Mm -hmm. It's something people discuss in the elevator, but it's Harry. Mm -hmm. Harry has pulled things off before and he will again. And mm -hmm. they sort of see him as a top developer. And so they recognize that this is kind of his divorce, but it's not his business. And your, your sense is he'll probably still be a wealthy man no matter how it goes. Correct. I wouldn't bet against him. <laughs>